Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So now, uh, I'm feeling a little tired today, so I was, uh, I was uh, working on a few things, and uh, as far as with the Lord, but I uh, had to work on. And you know, sometimes I, I think about, actually I thought about this today, uh, something our bishop says is that, you know, sometimes, you know, you can be working on things all week long, and uh, sometimes the Lord may not necessarily give you something all the right then. And he said sometimes, you know, you get in the pulpit, and boom, God will give him that word. And, you know, I was working on a couple things, you know, it's always, because I always have things lined up. I can talk about anything, but, you know, I don't always just want to be talking about anything, because um, God always has something, a word in season for those who are here. Those who may be weary, sometimes those who may need encouragement, those who may need to know they need to come on into the ark because it's getting ready to rain. Everything. God always knows. And so I had something, I had a couple things I was going to talk about, and I'm not going to talk about them. Um, I happened to actually be in another room when I got here, and I said, Lord, I didn't want to wall of these things. What is it that I'm going to talk about? And uh, last night, it hit my mind, I, I stuck with this thing, and this will be, we might make a DVD out of it, I, it just comes to my mind. I think I want to see a DVD of it, um, because, uh, you know, because of all the parts of it, and I'm definitely going, you know, got, got some good people in here that's very skilled and talented and anointed, so I'll get a DVD, even if it's just for me, you know what I'm saying, this is what God has done, I'm going to get a DVD of all these parts. And uh, so the, this title, last night, uh, and, and before I say the title, it, it, uh, it's important that we always keep our focus, that we always uh, stay on task because the enemy real quickly can get you off of task of what you come to do. Um, whether it's in school, whether it's work, whatever you set out to do, the enemy always wants to get you off of task. And this title, um, last night when I was getting ready, um, to go to the gym because I joined this gym, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I had the outfit, you know what I'm saying? Had the shoes, you know what I'm saying? Had the gloves on, you know what I'm saying? I got the gloves on you know, for a few weeks, you know, I've been feeling good, clothes and this day, been good, you know. And I'm getting going to this gym, and I'm like, yeah, man, these weights don't know what's about to hit them. <laughs> You already done made up your mind what you about to do. And you got it in your mind. But I'm like, yeah, just wait. Get that right. wait, and I'm going to do this, this, and that. And real quickly, if you don't keep focus, you can uh, easily walk through that door and turn the corner. And you didn't go for man, I'm about to hit these weights and get hard. I'm, I'm ready to go to singing a song, Jesus, be a fence all around me. All around this area right here. You didn't turn the corner into the gym and you didn't see all these distractions. All these women in there, and everybody got on the tight pants. So you in there like, oh, Jesus, be a fence. Now I need to go get my iPod. I need a fence right here. I don't need a fence right here. I need a fence right here. And it showed how quickly you can be distracted. Um, real quick, just by things that to throw you off, and you know, you over here trying to work out. Somebody like, now you gotta go over here and work out. Like, I can't work. I gotta go over here. I gotta work out down here. Like just, <laughs> <laughs> I, just I can't look in the mirror in myself. And something else is in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, man. So it, it, it brought to mind. I was thinking about this Bible study. I said, man. I'm like, hey, boy, uh, I be need to pray all the time. Like, this is why we, we got to be prayerful and stay in prayer yeah. and focus. So yeah. the Bible study topic tonight, this is going to be part four. And I think this will be it for it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, and I'm, uh, that's why I said, you know, I might make a series of it. And, uh, and it's going to be titled, This is Why. <laughs> we all need prayer. Part four. And, uh, <laughs> Working. You got people that make series of things that I'm going to put them all in order. You know, you never know. It's like somebody in California somewhere. So, you know, you never know. 
But uh, this is why we all need prayer. And it's going to uh, deal with some characters that we're all familiar with. One is Esau. The other one is David. And the other is about characters that you don't always hear about. Everybody doesn't always talk about them. But they had very influential parts in the Bible. They work together in the ministry and the things God had for them to do. And it showed the importance of teamwork and why we all need prayer. And those individuals Amen. is Priscilla and Aquila. Oh, yeah. Mighty men and women of God. Mary, you know, anointed <laughs> by God, used by God mightily in the things of God. So um, those are the characters we're going to deal with. And of course, before we do anything, we're going to go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, I thank you for the gathering. God, I thank you for the awesome opportunity that you've given us to be here, God. I know the grass withers and the flower fades away, God, but your word shall stand forever, Father God. So I thank you. I magnify you. I exalt you, Father God. Father God, stand before you, Father God. Unworthy, Father God, to stand before your people. Unworthy, Father God, to even teach, God. But I give you thanks and praise for your mercy and grace. That's new every morning, God. I thank you, Father God. I thank you for your cleansing blood, Father God. I thank you for washing away my sins, oh God. I thank you for dying for me, God. I thank you, Father God. Sometimes we take them for granted, God, but I thank you, Father God, for having mercy on me, Father God. When somebody else, Father God, is in judgment, God, I thank you for your mercy and that you continue to work on me, God, that you can to talk to me, God, that you will finish what you started in me, God. I just want to tell you, thank you for being an awesome God. Now, God, I ask you in the name of Jesus, God, anoint your was that it was on the first son, but really it was on the second son. It wasn't on Esau, it was going to be on Jacob. And so uh, Esau was the one that was going to get the blessing, but him and his mother, uh, they conspired together um, to where he would ultimately get the position that was supposed to be for him anyway, but it, the matter in which they went about it wasn't good, but um, ultimately... He was going to get the position that he was supposed to get. And um, it came the time when it, uh, Esau was supposed to get the blessing. And it was getting ready to happen. But Esau happened to be out in the field. He was working hard. He was a man that was rough. You know, he liked working with his hands and things of that nature. And Jacob found the right opportunity to try to take from him something that is priceless, something that you money can't buy, something that when God gives it to you, that you have to cherish it. And sometimes people don't cherish 
things. Sometimes people real quickly can look at something as being not valuable, but in the eyes of God, it's valuable. The fact that he was mindful enough of you to give it to you and for you to look at it as being something minimal, it really shows that you weren't worthy of it to begin with. So we're going to read here in the story about how Esau, he was out in the field working. And it really shows why we all need prayer and why we always have to, even when we find ourselves tired, because I get tired, when you may get faint, we always have to keep our spiritual radar on and mindful because the enemy never sleeps. He's always awake. He's always on his job. He don't never clock out. He's always getting overtime for the wages and the things that he's doing because he has an ultimate goal to bring us to his expected end. And I don't want his expected end. So he is always working hard to try to get us because the world already belongs to him. The world is already on their way to hell. But he is after the church. And he wants to get the people of God and catch you when you least expect it. And so this story right here, we're going to jump into it. It teaches us why we all need prayer. Genesis 25, verse 29. And Jacob saw pottage. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. So Jacob knew that his brother was getting ready to come in here, and he was already tired. He was going to be hungry. He was going to need something to drink. He already knew. So the scenario was already set up. And it says, And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red porridge, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. So Esau came in and he said, feed me with the same porridge that you're getting ready to eat. And Jacob saw an opportunity to slip in. He saw an opportunity where Esau was tired, where Esau, his mind wasn't where it needed to be. He was at a place where he was faint. He was at a place where he was vulnerable. He was at a place that his guard wasn't up. And this teaches us something very important of why we need prayer, that we always keep our guard up. That when we deal with the enemy, you can never take your guard down. You can never lose focus because when you do it for a quick second, when you take your eyes off of Jesus, Peter, you can sink immediately. You can fall right in when you take your eyes off off of the Lord. Case in point of the example of coming into the gym. When you take your eyes off of what you came in and do, real quickly you can find yourself singing a whole nother tune. You know what I'm saying? If you take your focus off of what you came to do. So he tells them, sell me your birthright, which is the blessing, the treasures, the giftings passed on to you from your father. The blessing came from the father. And the father would lay the hands on that son. And not only would he lay hands and give the birthright, but he would speak the blessings of God, the hand of God, the anointing of God. It wasn't just any type of blessing. It was the anointing of God. It was when God, it was like God's hand laying on you that when I pass on, that you are going to step into this office, this anointing, this position that I have prepared for you. It's not just for anybody. It's not just for anything. It's a special place that God has given you. Everybody won't have this opportunity. That's why we need to always be give thanks unto God when he even gives us an opportunity to be in a leadership position or to be able to do anything in the kingdom of God because it's a privilege to be able to walk with the Lord and to be able to do the ministry work of the Lord because there's a whole lot of people who are on their way to hell working for the devil and they don't realize it. But the simple fact that God will even allow you to be in the family and be able to receive the blessing and for his hand to be upon you, it was a blessing. So he let them know that sell me this, this birthright, these blessings, these things that you are getting ready to receive. And look how Esau reacts. How, how he responds. And it teaches us this is why we all need prayer. And it said, Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. What profit shall this birthright do to me? So he lost sight of the value of the blessing. In a moment of weakness, he lost sight of something that was valuable that God had gave him. In a moment of weakness, he lost sight of what was important. That's why we have to be careful what our eyes see because the eyes are the gateway into your heart, your soul. You have to be careful not to lose sight 
of what it is that God may have given you. Don't lose sight in a moment of weakness. I put up there the example of Samson. It was in a moment of weakness that he lost sight of what it was that God gave him. He saw that this was an enemy. Delilah was an enemy. She was a hit woman sent from the devil to take him down. She was a distraction. She was an enemy. And this is why we all need prayer. I was even reminded of it. I didn't think about this. This just happened to come to mind. And you know, we always got examples. And the Lord just happened to bring this to mind. And I'm reminded of the time when I was on the road to salvation. And I, I had been an RA, y'all. And I was in there and I was working hard and everything. And they had just, they were getting ready to interview this new supervisor and I got to sit in on the interview. She was going to be my boss. And, you know, I sat in and I said, wow, you know what I'm saying? She is, you know, she was like 25, 26. I was like 19. I was young. I was like, saved, y'all. Yeah. This is pre-Jesus. I was on the road to Jesus. And so I'm sitting there like, man, she is bad. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, she ends up getting, uh, coming, you know, getting hired on and she joins the staff. And I got all these things I'm thinking about, like, man, I'm going to do this, this, and that. I'm going to get this refund. I'm going to get this food, this, 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 this. I'm going to get this music. You know, this is, this is pre-Jesus. You know what I mean? And then Gerald LaVert, a little bit. I, Gerald had to go, what I got to say. Then Gerald LaVert, I got everything set up. You know what I'm saying? You know, so, and uh, so I had all these things. And this was during the time I had just was getting ready. I was coming in. And I was seeking the Holy Ghost. And during this time, um, just thinking about her and spending time doing certain things, it caused me to be so distracted during that time. And I didn't realize it. And it was so crazy is the fact that the Lord, and looking back over my life, it showed how quickly that when you lose sight of what God is giving you real quickly, you can miss what God is saying. But thank the Lord for his grace and mercy that he continues to have upon us and he don't give up on us. The Lord even a lot of people that wasn't saved. My drunk roommate, and uh, I had an atheist roommate and a drunk roommate that drank a lot, and um, he could see like, man, you might want to leave her alone. Like, man, she she then she got some some issues that she deal with. She got some anger issues and this and that. Like, man, you don't know anything about this girl, man. Like, what do you know? And if, you know, if the Lord was dealing with me, He was showing that I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't aware. I was coming up by myself, feeling good. You know what I'm saying? I said, no, man. I think she's good. Like, man, she said she went. She went to a church. She grew up. She got the Holy Ghost, feeling sons, everything like that. She saved. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna bring her to Bible study. She's gonna meet Kevin and everybody. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can't go give me the thumbs up. <laughs> But real quickly, and you can take, you can see when you take your mind off of the Lord and you're not focused, and the enemy can slip in real quick. And I was so distracted yeah. with her during that process, and eventually, you know, things didn't work out. We got into a disagreement over some stuff, and she had some anger issues and some some crazy stuff. So that's why we need prayer. That's why we all need prayer for discernment. You know, so that's what Kevin talks about. Same day in relationships, red flags. She had some red, some serious red flags. And I was like, you know, I look past it. You know what I'm saying? She was cool, you know, you know what I'm saying? So I looked past those red flags and eventually things didn't work out like they like I wanted to to. She ended up go converting to some other religion, some other nonsense. And I was just frustrated. I'm like, man, this is crazy. I like, man, I thought this was it. And right after that happened, this is why we all need prayer. T Jakes came out with a DVD that I ordered, and he talked about on that DVD that on the way to your destiny, the devil will send people your way and will anoint them to bring you down. And that's why he said they'll come in an Arnold Schwarzenegger, Morris Chestnut Bill, or a Coca a Coca Cola bottle shake woman, and you you ain't you like oh boy this is from the Lord. And if you're not spiritually aware or paying attention real quickly, that Delilah can come in and cut your hair, and you ain't paying attention. That's why you know what I'm saying I love everybody, but if I ever met a Delilah and we was really cool, you know what I'm saying. I be cool, especially if she got saved this and that, but she better not cut hair. Like, but I'm letting her know. <laughs>
Renee. It's like, okay, I can't, it just can't be me. I'm sorry. I pray for her, but it just can't be me. But real quick, it showed that when you take your sights off of the Lord, that you can lose focus real quickly. And during that time, I was seeking the Holy Ghost, but I was distracted by her. I was distracted by her beauty. I was distracted by just coming down to the office, you know, spending time, doing all the things instead of reading my word, being where I needed to be. And Samson did the same thing. He found himself in her lap. He came to a place where he was tired. He found a place to lay his head. A place in the lap of a terrorist. Somebody who was sent by the devil to destroy him. Because she kept, and he knew that she was trying to kill him. Because she kept asking, where does your strength lie? Now a real woman of God, a real person that's been sent by God, won't be trying to get at what God has given you to try to destroy you. But if anything, they would want to build you up. And she wasn't the one that was there to build him up. She was there trying to find out where his secret strength is because his secret strength was in his muscles. Because a lot of people will read this story of Samson and think he was this dude with all these muscles. No. Because if it was, if that was the case, why did they ask the question, where does your strength lie? And it showed that it's not in the outward. It is something that God does on the inside. It shows that it don't matter what you look like on the outside of everybody else. Yeah. It's what God does on the inside. Yeah. That when the Holy Ghost comes in, it don't matter who your mama was, who your daddy was, who your cousins was. It don't matter all the craziness that happened in their life. When the Holy Ghost comes in, it oh, regenerates shit. you. That's what it says. It says regeneration. Regene or rate you. Regene or rate you. It takes away the genes that you had and it gives you God's genes. So it gives yeah. you a supernatural ability to do things that you otherwise would not be able to do. So it regenerated him. And he was able to do supernatural things. So the enemy wanted to know where does your strength lie? And he used this woman that was an enemy to cause him to fall off. And he lay in her lap and he said, when you cut my hair, my strength will leave from me. He lost sight of the value of his hair not being cut. That he kept his hair, it was a Nazarite, that his hair would not be cut because it, it was the it, it was a sign that you were set apart. It represented the anointing of God. It was something that God used to set you apart from everybody else, but he lost sight of the value of it. And because he allowed himself to lose sight of it, he fell asleep too. How are you going to fall asleep in her lap and somebody come and cut your head? Now, if somebody start cutting on me, I'm going to wake up. But this man, it showed that he was so tired. And it, and it really showed that when you don't keep your spiritual radar on and you're not careful where you lay your head at, the enemy will slip in real quick and cut what God has given you. And he ended up losing everything. The enemy came in, gouged out his eyes, cut his hair, beat him, cut him, do, did all these things to him, and they made fun of him, and they glorified their God, saying, look what our God has done. And this is why it's so important, and why we all need prayer, yeah. that we don't allow the enemy to come in and try to humiliate us, and try to think that he can get the best of us, or our God. But what I love about the Lord is that the Lord is so mindful of us, that he ain't gonna allow his name to be trashed yeah. and the enemy to think yeah. that you got the best of me. No, I knew this was going to happen. Yeah. But I'm going to let you know that it ain't over till I say it. So yeah. he may have made some mistakes, but when the story is all said and done, all y'all in here to celebrate, there ain't going to be no celebration when I restore back yeah. his anointing. God restored back his anointing and yeah. he destroyed all those enemies. But yeah. it taught a valuable lesson not to lose sight of something valuable. Esau lost sight of the blessing that God gave him. He lost sight of the blessing. And it said, Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. He promised the blessings, the treasures, the anointing of God that was stored up for him for a little bit of pleasure for his flesh. He sold what God had for him for the pleasures of his flesh. So many people even when they stand before the Lord on Judgment Day, well, when the Lord begins to speak to them and talk to them, and they say, well, Lord, I did this and I did that, 
And I gave money to the poor and I did all these other things and the Lord will tell them, depart from me for I never knew you. The times when I called you and I said this and I said that and I told you to give this up and I told you to give that up and you said not now God. Well I can't give this up God. You know you gave me this blessing. I can't give this up God for that right there. They looked at salvation, deliverance, going to heaven as being something minimal. I, you know I. I, can, I don't want that. I can give that up. I can give that away. It's not important to me right now. I can give it up for a little bit of pleasure for my flesh. And it will cost him an eternal uh, thing. And the same thing here with Esau. Because he sold his birthright. And because he really thought it wasn't nothing at that moment. He ultimately lost the birthright. And it caused a whole lot of friction with his brother where... He ended up trying to kill his brother, and his brother had to leave. He had to come back. And because of him losing sight of what it was that God had given him, he ended up uh, marrying the wrong type of tribe. But it really showed why we need prayer, that we don't allow things to distract us, because you never know what can be the after effects of you losing sight of something God gave you. You may not look at it as being something that, that that's, that's, it's, not, it's not that big of a deal, but look at the outcome of those who can be affected by that decision you made right now. Who it affects down the line. The lives that are taken. Those who are, who are killed down years and years and years down the line simply for the fact that you lost focus in a moment of weakness. You allowed it to get the best of you yeah. in that situation. That's why we all need prayer. Because I know we all had times where things might have got the best of us. But we want to pray that Lord don't allow it. Yeah. Anything to get the best of me to yeah. where it causes it to have outcomes and things that, that, yeah. that, that spirals down the line that, that hurts other people. God, let it not be said that that happens to me. This is why we all need prayer. That this is not something that happens to us. So that's what happens with Esau. He sold his birthright for a bowl of porridge. He sold his birthright for something that will appease his flesh temporarily. And it cost him the blessings of God. And the second person we're going to talk about looking at a good thing and keeping our minds in the right perspective is David. And David... Uh, was a man to God. He was out there fighting on the battlefield. He was doing the things of God. He was doing all that God would have for him to do. His men were constantly out there. They were fighting battle after battle after battle. And there came a point that an uh, enemy had slipped in while they were out on the battlefield fighting. We're going to read about it. And this enemy came in and it took their families captive. And it was these enemies, these Amalekites, these Amalekites, as TDJ's brought out, uh, these Amalekites are that unkilled enemy that if you don't kill them when God says kill them, then they will come back to bite you later on down the road. If you don't destroy that which God said destroy it right now, I know Sister Monica, she mentioned the story about uh, Saul last night. And the issue was with, with him was the fact that not only he took the spoils and he took uh, uh, King Agag. What was so crazy about King Agag was the fact that he used to, he uh, would cut the vagina of a lot of the women. And he would cause a lot of the women to where they couldn't have babies. And he would, he would, he would do a lot of vile things to the women. And that's why when God told him to kill everything, God said kill everything. And he took the king and the, the prophet Samuel came and it showed you how God looks at sin. And he, when, when uh, Saul was rejected as being king, he said bring King Agag to me. It represents the Amalekites. He represents that group. He took a, a knife and he, he cut him in pieces with a, with a knife. Can you imagine being cut up like you cut meat up? Like in front of him like he was cutting him up. But his lineage still went on and these Amalekites come about and it shows that you have to cut it up. You have to kill what God says kill because if you don't, it can affect generations yeah. to come. Here again, here's that story of what happens when you lose sight of when God says destroy it. If you don't lose, if you lose sight of it, look at the generations to come when you die off who will have to fight an enemy that they would have not had to fight if you would have handled business in your generation, yeah. in your time when God gave you the opportunity. But because you didn't handle it, now it's an enemy that slips in and affects somebody else's life. But God still knows how to work all things together. And this is why we need prayer. And this story here, so they're out there fighting. And so we come into the story, 1 Samuel 30. 
And it came to pass that when David and his men were coming to Ziglag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziglag had smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but they carried them away and went on their way. Now again, the Amalekites are a relentless enemy that if you don't kill them, they will come back to bite you. They will come back to bite you if you do not destroy it when you have an opportunity. I put up there this movie uh, uh, called The Edge, I believe that's what it was called, that a long time ago, that me and B. James were watching uh, and on this movie, it was so crazy about the, these people that was in this force, if I recall it correctly, and it was this bear that was in this force, and this bear just kept following them in this force, and when they had the opportunity to kill the bear, they didn't kill the bear. You know, it's not one of those fun, cuddly little bears you want to pet at this little, like, yeah, look at the bear, cuddly, cuddly. No, you know, them things ain't all cuddly, and you let him out, he's going to maul you. You can't, you, oh, got, yeah. you can't take loose focus on what that bear can do. He ain't cute and cuddly, but no, he ain't cute and cuddly. He may pretend to be cute and cuddly, but if you want to wrap your arms around him, he's going to wrap himself around you, or he really is, but you're going to be eating, and you're going to be before the Lord. So it showed why in this movie that they lost focus on the importance of taking care of this bear, that they was running from the bear, and they should have killed the bear when they had a chance, but they didn't. And they thought, okay, we ain't going to worry about this bear. And this bear was tracking them the whole movie, and he was taking them out one by one. And finally, it came to a conclusion that this bear is tracking us, y'all. That if we don't kill this bear, he's going to kill all of us. And they got to that point that one of them was his leg was this mango, and his bear, he just happened to look over, and his bear was like six feet away, and his leg was kind of, huh, you know, hurt, and it was, it was terrible when his bear just charged him. Like, it's, it's just nothing you can do. It was, it was funny. <laughs> it wasn't funny, but it was. Like, oh, hey, bro. Hey, man, he took it. Man. He's boy rare. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, man, it's everybody for their stuff right now. But at the end of the movie, it showed why they needed to kill that bear. They had to kill that bear. But if they would have killed that bear early on, their lives would have never been taken if they would have just simply killed that bear. But they didn't. And in the story here, these men, as David and them were out on a battlefield fighting for the Lord, that these Amalekites, these enemies that should have been killed a long time ago, they came in and took their families captive and things of that nature. They burned the city up and all those type of things. But it said that they didn't kill any of them. They just took them captive. And they took them to the place where they wanted them to be. And the Bible says here in verse 3, So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. They were taken into bondage. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. This is why we all need prayer. Because even at a moment like this, you can real quickly lose sight and lose focus. You can lose faith real quickly if the enemy comes in and he has family members or friends or people in captivity, in bondage. Real quick, you can lose faith in God. Forget all the things that God has done for you. How far God has brought you along. All the testimonies of all that God has done for you in a moment, in a moment of weakness, cause all that to go out the window. Oh, God, man, it took a was crying and weeping and rightfully so. But it shows us that we have to keep our spiritual radar on, that we have to keep our focus and that we don't never lose track and understand that the Lord knows everything anyway and that the Lord is still with us and that he has not forgotten us. And one thing that came to mind when I was working on this is that the importance of even being leaders Keeping God at the center of your leadership yeah. or your position in the midst of adversity, chaos, and test. Yeah. Keeping the Lord at the center of it when chaos and things are going on. There has to be somebody who has a right mind, a sober mind, yeah. who knows how to speak in the midst of chaos. All right, come on, everybody. Come on, come on, come on. You may cry with everybody, but there has to be somebody that needs to get everybody's attention. Okay, y'all, yeah. the battle is not over, y'all. Come on. We got to get ourselves together. Somebody who can spiritually yeah. get everybody's attention attention back. Let's not forget what the Lord has done for us. Let's not let this get the best.
best of us right now. Our families may be gone right now, but God didn't bring us this far to allow our families to be taken. The devil is a lie. He didn't allow all this stuff to happen. We have to keep our focus and keep the Lord at the center of our leadership and our mind and understand that he is with us. He has given us all these victories all along. So obviously that the Lord ain't forgot about us, but that this situation has come along to teach us something. Why we all need prayer. And they all wept and they cried and things of that nature. And they were upset. They were angry. They were confused. They had a state of loss, thinking that their families were killed. The Bible doesn't say that any bodies were described in the text. So it's very interesting that the Bible doesn't say there was anybody killed. It just said that they were taken captive. This is why we all need prayer that we never lose focus. That we never fall off track yeah. of the things that God would have us to do. And it says in verse 6, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him. Now, I would be distressed too. <laughs> if, you know, I came in and I was one of the leaders. And you know what I'm saying? Everybody talked about stoning. You know what I mean? Stoning is serious. You know what I'm saying? They ain't even throw some rocks at you. Know, you pick up them big boulders. Like, oh, like, you know what I'm saying? That's some big, huge rocks. And you're in one of those tight corners where you can't really go too far. And it was like 50, 60 people. You know what I'm saying? It's about to be a wrap. Well, you better make your peace calling an election short. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it wasn't something uh, easy. But David was distressed at that moment. He was concerned for his life because the people talked about stoning him. But this is right here. This is something um, that was so important that David understand why God had put him in position. God put him in position as a leader for a reason. God had allowed him to go through trials and, and situations before he stepped into this kingship, this leadership, so that he would understand that God had groomed him for this leadership. So in the midst of chaos and tests and trials, he don't want to let what the people say get the best of him and cause him to lose focus on what the Lord has done for him and not cause him to forget that when a lamb was in the mouth of a lion and a bear that the Lord allowed him to take a sword and to, 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 to kill that bear and to rip that lion to pieces. Now that's a testimony right there for you to kill a lion and a bear. If I ever killed a lion and a bear, you talk about faith, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like, man, I would walk out in a safari. You ain't going to see you know what I mean? You know, us out there walking the safari. But if I kill a lion and a bear, like, man, it's nothing too hard for God right now. I'm going to walk, honey, let's walk out here on the safari. I got you, man. Like, let's, I wish a lion would jump. I wish he would where you at. I wish he would jump out right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what? I'm not going to testimony to that lion. I mean, tell me, your boy is over here in the grave. I'll bring him out and show him to you. I wish he would bring your friends with you, too. The Lord on my back. You know what I'm saying? So, David had a testimony of what the Lord had done for him. But in this situation, he allowed it, things to cause him to be distressed. But right here, this is why we all need prayer. This is why we all need prayer, that we keep our focus and our minds where it needs to be in the Lord. But look what the verse said here. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But this right here, y'all, this is why prayer is so important. Fasting, reading, because it will be that that will bring back to your mind the things God has spoken, the things that God has started in you. When fear and things try to come in your way, cause you to lose focus, like, man, it's over, man. I'm about to die, like, man, this is about to happen, that's about to happen. The Word of God will be brought back to your mind. That's why we have to read the Word of God. We have to study, not just read. The Bible says study to show yourselves approved unto God. A good workman who need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God. A lot of people read, but they don't study. That's why you get into discussions and disagreements with people with the word of God, because they don't study. They read, but they don't study. And that's why sometimes I'm learning not to just dust my feet off as a testimony. I'm not even going to have a discussion sometimes with people. If I've given you the truth, the Bible says don't cast your pearls before swine. Those who are not worthy to hear the things that God has given. When you're giving spiritual revelation and they're giving carnal, um, their carnal responses back to what spiritually the, the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. You have to be 
be able to humble yourself and hear what it is that God is saying in the midst. It wasn't by happenstance that God may have allowed me to come into your space or you to come into somebody's space. God has given you an opportunity to hear truth that you might not necessarily have heard. And if you're walking in your flesh and not the spirit, you will miss what it is that God is saying because you are speaking from what you read and not what you studied. You ain't dealing with a novice because I've dealt with many people who are Muslim or who are atheists who are or Seventh day Adventists who are uh, all different type of stuff and they say well I dealt with this person and I dealt with that person they couldn't explain this and they couldn't explain that I said well you got the right one today right now I'm going to let you know I'm your huckleberry like they said in tune stuff you got the right one today I'm going to let you know you ask every question you want to ask I studied the word of God I know he going to be so you ain't, going, you ain't dealing with a novice you ain't dealing with somebody that don't know the word of God I can take every argument that you are speaking and turn it around I exactly how to take people's arguments and rip them to bits. I can rip their arguments to bits in a quick second. That's what I love to do in high school. I would specifically go on the other side just so I can argue with you and take every one of your points and find holes in everything that you are saying and rip it to bits. But God has allowed me to come in and get saved and not do that like I used to when I was zealous for the Lord because I would poke holes and rip people to bits sometimes. But God had to bring their zeal down because zeal without knowledge or wisdom is not good. So God had to temper me and bring me to that place where now I have the wisdom to speak to people with love and kindness and not rip them to bits like I could because I can find errors in your arguments. I, I, I can be a lawyer. I know how to bring the arguments out. I can find error in what you're saying. But God has brought me to a place where why it's important to study the Word of God because the Word of God, it will bring things back to your remembrance. When people are there flipping through the Word and they're telling you this, and they're telling them, no, let me tell you what the Bible The Bible says this in this book right here, and it says here in the Hebrew, and it says this in the Greek, and it's 27 times it's mentioned in the, in the 66 books of the Bible, and when you break down the uh, the hermeneutics of the text, which is Bible interpretation, tone, setting, history, when you break it all down, yeah. this is what it's talking about right here. Uh, well, where is that? It's right here in this way, right here. <laughs> Go, don't flip to it. Go ahead, go ahead, turn to it. There it is. Oh, yeah, it is right there. Yeah, this is what it means, right? You see, the word is in my heart. I, 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 I read the word. I study, but it's in my heart. It ain't in your heart. That's why you flip it through trying to come against what I'm saying. But you can't box with God. Your arms are too short to box with God. You're not fighting against me. You're fighting against the Holy Ghost that is in me that's speaking the word of God. That's who you're fighting against, and that's who people will have to stand before the Lord on judgment day for fighting against the Holy Ghost and the ones who God used when God was speaking through them with the truth of the gospel. And they didn't take heed to what the Holy Ghost was speaking. Because it wasn't me, it was the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus inside of me. And he will point out how you rejected the truth that I gave to you because you were walking in your flesh and you were trying to hear what the Spirit was saying. But David right here, he encouraged himself in the Lord. This is why we all need prayer. That we would encourage ourselves. Sometimes when everybody ain't with you, sometimes you gotta yeah. encourage yourself in the Lord. If you ain't got nobody else to encourage, encourage yourself. Yeah. Like, man, I just need somebody to pray. Pray for yourself. Yeah. I just need, I just need, I need a word. Get a word yourself. Open up the Bible. If God has given you the Holy Ghost, you have a word on the inside of you. Yeah. You have to stir up the gift. That's what Paul told Timothy. Stir up the gift that is in you, that's been given to you, laid on of hands. Let's stir it up. You know, your mom had the gift. Your grandmother had the gift. Your aunt everybody had the gift. Serve that gift, Timothy. Uh, Timothy, you have that gift, an anointing that God has given you. It's a generational anointing. It's a gifting that God has passed down to you. Stir it up. Stir it up. And when you stir it up, it will bring things back to remembrance. And uh, David encouraged himself in the Lord. When everybody else was against him, he encouraged himself. He was worried for his life. Yeah. The fight is not with each other. It's against the devil. Yeah. And David stirred himself up and he realized he encouraged himself like this battle is not mine. This belongs to God. This this battle, y'all, wait a minute, y'all. Let me encourage myself. This fight ain't against us, y'all. It's against the devil. Yeah. Let us not lose focus. Let this mind be in us that was also in Christ. Let us have the mind of Christ to see the enemy for who he is. He encouraged himself. This is why we all need prayer. When everyone is ready to give up, there's got to be somebody who is willing yeah. to stand in the gap and say, man, I'm going to encourage myself right now. I'm going to believe God myself right now. If everybody else is ready to give up, I'm not going to give up on God because God is able. Uh, verse number 8, 
Uh, John Mc, can you read that? And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Shall I pursue after this troop? Thank you, God. Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Now look at this. David, after he got himself together, he cried a little bit with everybody. It's okay sometimes to cry. Ain't nothing wrong with crying. Yeah. But after you didn't cry with the people, encourage yourself in the Lord. That yeah. it ain't over with yet. It's good to meet people where they are, but after you get done crying, encourage yourself yeah. in the Lord. And once you've encouraged yourself, this is why we all need prayer. This is why we have to have that relationship with God. That's why you need prayer, because it's that communication between you and the Lord. And David, he inquired of the Lord. He said, so I but pursue after these enemies that took our, our, our wives and our daughters should I pursue? And look what the Lord said. Uh, and he answered and said, pursue. And not only do I want you to pursue them, for thou shalt surely overtake them. It's not God ain't going back and forth like, I don't know if you should go, David. Uh, it's kind of shaky. Like, <laughs> the Lord ain't back and forth with her. Uh, yeah, you should do that. No, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, God ain't playing tap with you. Like, tap you. No, no, no. I'm just playing with you, dog. Know, like, God. <laughs> about this. Uh, again, we'll get back to you in a few minutes. No, the Lord already knows. He says you shall surely overtake them and without fail. Meaning there ain't going to be no failure. Why? Because there's no failure in God. There's no failure. When God sets out to do something, there ain't no failure in God. When God speaks something, it's not going to come back to him. Boy, if he said you ain't going to fail, it don't matter if it's a thousand of them and you. If God said you ain't going to fail, you ain't going to fail. Like if God said I ain't going to fail, I'm just not going to fail. It don't matter what the professors say. If they say uh, yeah, you're going to fail, I'm not going to fail because at the end of the day, you don't have a decision on my grade anyway. It's in the hands of the Lord. And it says the heart of the king is in the Lord's hands and he turns it whichever way he chooses. You may say I'm going to get it out, but the Lord has the final say and I end up getting to see. Like I told you I wasn't going to get it out. The Lord already knew what grade I was going to get. I just had to walk by faith. And so it said without fail, recover all. And the Lord let it be known. This is why we need prayer. Because prayer is that communication between you and God. And the Lord will let you know that you're going to recover all. This is why we need prayer. To keep our minds focused. Keep our eyes where it needs to be. So that when it comes time, when adversity and things come, that we are mindful and we're spiritually aware. So when God speaks and we, we go before the Lord. We know we get all the distractions out of our mind. That's why we have to keep in prayer so that in the midst of chaos and people crying and stuff, that you can hush all of that stuff and be able to hear God. That's why it's so important that when you get the Holy Ghost or you receive the Holy Ghost, that having that time that you spend with God so that you can understand or hear when God is speaking. So that in the midst of chaos and things are happening, you can hush everything up. Everybody be quiet for a minute. Oh, I need to hear from God. Sometimes you just got to go by yourself. Sometimes you got to get up and just move something. Time. And just go somewhere. Shut, shut the door. Turn Amen. the phone on so I can hear what thus saith the Lord. So I can hear what he is saying. Yes, you shall go after them and you shall recover all. It don't matter how everybody else is feeling. Yeah, what yeah. God has said right now. He has put me yeah, in yeah. position to let it be known that we shall recover all. Shake off your tears and get yourself up. David yeah, yeah. sought the Lord. He consecrated and sanctified himself. And God said, pursue. Forget about the tears, the mistakes made, the arguing. If you're willing to fight through the adversity, you yeah. shall recover all. This is why we all need prayer, that we never take our eyes off of Jesus, that we keep our focus on where it needs to be. In verse 15, and David said to him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? Now right here, when David and them were pursuing the enemy, they came up upon a young man that was in the field from Egypt, and they took the young man and they fed him, and he said, uh, can you bring us down to where these people are? He asked him where he came from. And he said, no, I'm not of this group. I came from Egypt. So it, this young man was going to be their way into the camp of the enemy. And David said, can thou bring me down to this company? He said, swear unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. And I will bring thee down to the company. So he said, just promise me that you won't deliver me back to the devil. The, this was, again, the Egyptian in the field that they fed who brought them to where their enemy was. So it shows right here. That's why we need prayer, y'all. Because prayer, God will show you things in the midst of prayer. And it shows that the enemy ain't going to get the best of you. God knows everything. God knows how to get you to the place where you need to be. Even when the enemy thinks he's going to get the best of you, God always has a way of revealing things. I put up the example of Paul's sister's son. 
square that there was a plot against Paul that all the Jews they had fasted. They said, we're going to fast until all night or all day or whatever the number of days it is until Paul is killed. And Paul's sister's son just happened to catch wind of the story. And he came and he told the story to Paul. And Paul told it to the soldier. And the soldier had him lifted down on the side of the jail to where he was able to escape. And it showed right here that the Lord is mindful of his people. And that's why communication and prayer is key. Because when you have that relationship with God, it orders your steps. It makes ways for you. It opens doors for you. It causes favor to open up when you may not expect favor to be there. It'll cause people to be in the right place at the right time for your benefit. You may not have thought that they, God may, you may have thought God gave up on you, but God may have somebody in place just for you to give the favor that you may need. And that, this person was the right person that was going to be the one to lead them down to victory. And it says that when he had brought him down, behold, they were, now look at this, y'all. This shows how wicked the enemy really is. And it shows that the devil, he, he, he loves to celebrate. He likes to celebrate thinking that he had got the victory. But it's not over until God says it's over. And he brought them down. Behold, they were spread abroad on the, the earth, eating, drinking, and dancing. Because all the great spoil they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. The devil was celebrating what he stole and what he had taken into captivity. This is why we all need prayer so God can guide us and order our steps to take back who or what the enemy has stolen. This is why we all need prayer. Because the enemy would love to just celebrate and take joy at those who we think he has taken captive or those who he thought he has got the victory over. Bishop preached about the book of Jude and how some some are pulled those out of the fire, hated even the spotting of their garment. And it shows right here that the power and the anointing that God can give his people have an authority to snatch somebody out of the fire in the midst of an eternal hell that they're on their way to. But God giving you the grace, the anointing to step in and snatch them out and say, not so. Amen. Upon this rock, I will build my church Amen. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And again, I talked about the gates a long time ago, but I'll mention it again. In the book of Genesis, when God told uh, Abraham, your seed shall possess the gate of their enemy. The gate represents a place of prison or captivity. Your seed shall possess that gate. And the Lord said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell won't prevail. The reason why they won't prevail is because I've given you power to possess the gate. So the gate of captivity that family members or people may be in, I've given you power to possess that gate. To pull them out from the midst of that gate. Pulling them out of the fire. They may all on their way to hell, but I've given you power to possess the gate. And the gates of hell won't prevail against you because you have power to possess the gate. You have power to shut the gate and open the gate up. I've given you that type of authority from heaven. And that's what it shows right here. That God gives us that type of authority and anointing. And look what happened. When they went down there, and David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men, which rolled upon camels and fled. And it showed that God will cause your enemy to flee. David and his men had already traveled a long way and fought previous battles. But God will give you a second wind and a fresh anointing in the midst of situations and battles that you had fought where you had found yourself feeling like, man, I'm winded, I'm tired, I don't know if I can fight this battle and do this and that. This is why we need prayer. Because it is in prayer that time that you spend with God praying, fasting, reading. God can give you a fresh anointing, a fresh wind when you feel like you can't go on. Some of the men thought that they couldn't go on and they stayed behind just in case some enemies got away. But these ones, God can give you a fresh anointing to be able to go on and pursue and recover all. He can give you that anointing and they fought all night until the morning time. You know what type of anointing you have to have? That's a supernatural anointing. That's something that God gives you a strength to be able to endure all night long, even until the twilight. It showed what God is able to do. I talked about how up here at T.D. Jakes talked about we can't fight today's battle with yesterday's anointing. We have to have a fresh anointing because you're fighting a, a devil today. You can't try to fight with yesterday's anointing. You need a fresh anointing today. That's why the Bible says, give me this day, my daily bread. Daily, you need a, a word. You need that anointing to fight because you got a daily devil that you fight.
fighting. Mm -hmm. So you need that fresh anointing daily, that renewedness, that strength to be able to fight. And the last thing it said here, and that's what I love, why we all need prayer, and why we got to keep focused on the Lord. It says, and David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. The Bible made sure to make mention, oh, we're going to recover all of them and go get most of my wives. He made, it made sure to make it known that he went and got his women. He go, I'm going to go get my woman. Hey, I'm going to get my score. I'm going to get my goods in the car. I'm going to get that girl over here. I'm going to make sure I'm going to get her because I get to get her. You know what I'm saying? Take it away. And it shows why we all need prayer. In verse number six, they were crying and they were ready to kill David. Yet he regrouped and God brought what he said to pass. No matter how tired you may get, if you have some fight left in you, God will not only confirm for you to pursue, but he will anoint you to do it. Yeah. This is why we need prayer. We always need prayer because it is in that time with God. God will give you what you need. God knows the, the things we need to fight our enemy because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. God knows the weapons we need to fight the enemy. We may not always know, but God knows what it is we need and what we need to do in order to fight that enemy. But it's that communication, that time we spend with God. And David was able to recover everything and was able to bless the people. And they got more this time than what they had previously. So they took what, the, what they took from other people. They took their stuff and some more stuff. So it showed that double portion of anointing, that double blessing that God is able to pour out. And the last thing here, just a couple of verses with Priscilla and Aquila. They were dealing with my man, uh, Apollos. A lot of you may have heard this story. You may not have heard about it. But Apollos was a mighty man of God. He was powerful in the scriptures. Yes, sir. And he was able to, to confound a lot of the Jews and the things of that nature. But he didn't have all the revelation. He did not have all full understanding of the word of God. This is why we always have to be discerning. Of things, when, especially when we're dealing with people, and this is, this shows when you have the real heart of God, because God, some God will send people into your life, not necessarily to just tear down your foundation, especially if you're a Christian and you know grew up in the church and things like that. God may send people into your life to give you greater understanding and to take you yeah. to a level that you may not necessarily have known yeah. about. You may not have understanding of everything. Yeah. I remember reading a book called Pigs in a Parlor. About this uh, this white couple, this man, this woman, I can't think of her name. But they they were, uh, they were they grew up in a Baptist church. They were Baptist their whole life. They were doing all these things in the ministry all over the world, doing a lot of great things. And they had never heard about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Never, nobody, it wasn't like that they were ignorant of it. Like, I'm against that, this and that. No, nobody had ever taught them about that. And God, they talked about it in the book. I believe it was that book or it might have been another one. I think it was that one. And he talked about how God sent somebody to them and gave them the understanding. And they were like, no, man, I ain't trying to hear that. No, the word of God is in the word of God. If you're walking with God and you're walking and if you truly are, are willing to walk with God, that you will hear when those who are of God are speaking to you. Because if you're not hearing, that means obviously you might not have been doing what it is God has for you to be doing in the first place. But if you truly love God and you're truly walking with God, then you will hear those and you will have the understanding that God didn't just happen to send this person into my life for no reason. He sent them into my life because God is trying to take me to a level that I may not uh, realize that. But if I get out of my flesh and get out of my own traditions and what I think I know, I need to get out the way. There's too many eyes sometimes. I need to get out the way and let God get in the midst. Let me sit self down. Let me sit myself down and shut my mouth and let me get some understanding and not lean on my understanding but on God's understanding. And these people, they they said they received what was being spoken and they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost filled up speaking in tongues and they, they received the word that was spoken to them. They didn't reject it, but they understood that God was sending somebody for a reason. And that's what Apollos was. He was powerful in the Lord, but he didn't have full understanding of the word of God. It says that this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. So he was taught the word. He came into the church. He had an understanding of the word of God. And he was very fervent in the spirit. He was consistent. He was powerful. He was excited. He was zealous for God. 
And he spake and taught diligently the things of God. He taught the word of God. But look what he taught. Knowing only the baptism of John. He only knew the baptism. And the baptism of John was the baptism of repentance. That's the only thing that he knew. He didn't have full revelation about you that you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. That you need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Evidence by speaking in tongues. He didn't have all the revelation. All he understood was the baptism of John. But look what the Bible says in verse 26. And he spake boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. When they heard what it was that God was doing in him, they were excited at what God was doing. And they pulled him to the side. And this is where it shows why we need prayer. Because when you've spent time with God, you will understand and discern that this is not just anybody that's coming to me speaking. This is a man of God. This is a woman of God. That God has sent me. God has been so gracious to me that he would allow me to uh, have somebody sent my way. I could have been on my way to hell right now thinking that I got it all together. But God loved me enough to send somebody my way so that I can get the full understanding standing of the gospel. That I get the full revelation. That's why there's a lot of churches. Like my church I grew up in, it was a Baptist church. But a lot of the churches now have become, like my dad's church, it's become full gospel Baptist. Yes. Because they didn't have the, they were not walking in the full gospel of the truth that they were teaching. They weren't teaching all the truth. All of them weren't doing what it was that they needed. But now, a lot of them are teaching the full gospel. A lot of them are baptizing in Jesus' name. Amen. A lot of them are believing and teaching in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Speaking in tongues. Because many of them have received the truth, but now when God reveals truth and you're walking with God and you're in prayer with God, you understand that this is not just anybody God has sent, but God is mindful enough to send me. It don't matter whether you're black, you're white, you're Asian, whether you're Baptist, you're Methodist, you're Presbyterian, whatever you may call yourself. When God wants you to be saved and delivered, God will send somebody to you, no matter what you want to call yourself. This is what you need to do to be saved. This is what you need to do to get to heaven. And if these things are in order, then you can be on your way. But if you don't have these things, God has sent me your way because God loves you enough to give you the truth. And he sent them, uh, God sent Priscilla and Aquila. They was powerful in the Bible. They ministered unto Paul. They ministered unto a lot of people. And they explained this more perfectly. And when you read this in the book of Acts, it doesn't say nowhere in the text where, where, Aquila, where uh, Apollos was like, man, I ain't trying to hear that. No, he received what was being spoken. Because when he, if you're in prayer and you're walking with God, then you understand, oh, these people must have been sent by God. And in the next chapter, in Acts 19, the Bible talks about how they wrote unto Paul to receive this Apollos and these other 11. And they sent them up the upper coast to Paul. And Paul, when he saw them, and it showed right here why we need prayer. Because when you are in prayer, you're in communication with God. You're able to discern things. You're able to understand yeah. and what God is doing. And when they were sent up the upper coast, the first thing Paul asked them is, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Yeah. Showing that people can be a believer and all yeah. those type of things. You can be a Christian, but that don't mean you got the Holy yeah. Ghost. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Since is a subsequent experience. Just because you say, oh, I, I'm a believer, that don't mean you got the Holy Ghost. And look what it said in the chapter. He said, we've not so much as heard if there be any Holy Ghost. It's not that we reject and we just had been taught. He said, have you received it? Have you received the Holy Ghost? Then Paul broke it down. He said, okay, well then unto what were you baptized? He said, well, we were baptized unto the baptism of repentance. So this right here, this was a teaching opportunity. Yeah. This was an opportunity for these 12 to get understanding. They said, we were baptized in the baptism of, of John. He said, well, that baptism was the baptism of repentance unto the one that was to come, which was Christ. And he said, when he, when he spoke this, when they heard it, it said that he baptized all of them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then it said he laid hands on them, and it didn't say five of them, six of them, seven of them, two of them, eleven of them. It said all twelve of them. When he laid hands on them, they received the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit Amen. gave others, and they prophesied. So they received it. So God was using Apollos mightily in the kingdom, but he didn't have full revelation. But he was spiritual enough um, and walking with God enough to understand that these have been sent for my good. Amen. God sent them for my good to take me higher. It yeah. wasn't something to tear down what I've been taught, but God wanted to give me an understanding that everybody ain't going to receive. Everybody ain't trying to hear about baptism in Jesus. Everybody ain't trying to hear about the holiness. Everybody ain't trying to hear. Just like everybody that's talking about heaven ain't going to heaven. Yeah. That's why we have to be grateful when God sends somebody our way. 
And it says, Apollos needed understanding. They loved him enough to correct him and reveal the mysteries of God. This is why we all need prayer, that we know the word and spiritually discern a person's need. Amen. And the last thing is 2 Corinthians 3 and 2. Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. People are reading about Jesus in you. And let us refuse to be a face in a crowd. This is why we all need prayer. That we would not just be a face in a crowd. But that uh, we are a living epistle that's read and known by all people. People are reading about Jesus based yeah. on your life and things that you do. People read about you. You may be the only Bible a person may ever read. Yeah. And just based on your lifestyle, the things that you say, the things that you do, praying for the people. You may be that Bible. Yeah. So we don't never want to just be a face in a crowd, but we want to be somebody that's effective for the things of God. So the lesson life teaches us not to lose sight of what God has given us, uh, to encourage ourselves and to understand when God has sent somebody for your good. And to understand that if God has sent it for your good, it's going to work out ultimately in the end. That's why, again, while we all need prayer, that we will spiritually discern uh, what it is God is doing, that we don't take our focus off of the Lord, and that when we, at times when we need it, that we encourage ourselves, and that we will walk so with God that, that when we're speaking, to those who may be without, that we can discern what it is that they need and that, that they would have a heart to hear what it is that we're speaking. So I definitely encourage everybody. Um, this is why we all need prayer. Amen. Amen. Amen.